and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Mr. Do, and science is my business. You're welcome to Mr. Do Science World, and today we're going to talk about power. We're looking at power in terms of feathers. Okay, so right now we want to look at the definition of power. When we say power, power simply means the rate at which work is done or the rate at which energy is being transferred. So, power is also a scalar quantity. As we said earlier that work and energy are scalar quantity because they are all related with power and they work together. They are also, power is also what? A scalar quantity. Let's look at the mathematical definition of power. When we talk about a power, we have said we have already said that power is the rate at which work is done. That simply means that power is equals to W over T, which means the W standing for work and T standing for time. So, in terms of symbol, we say it is what W P is equal to what W over T, and in terms of each formula, power is equal to work divided by time. Now, let's look at the units in which power can be measured. If you look at power, work is measured in terms of joules, time is measured in seconds. Therefore, if we are having W over T, W is in joules and T is in seconds, the unit of power becomes what? Joules per seconds. Right, just per second, so let's try and look at other ways in which we can look at the formula for power. Because power is work over what? Over time. Look at it and see. What is work itself? According to our last video, we said work is simply force times distance. Which simply implies, in place of work, we can put what? Force times distance. So power can also be equal to what? Force times distance over what? Over time. Now, on the other way around, we can look at power and say, okay, force is, if you look at it from the point where we look at the D over T, because we said it is F times D over T. If you look at D over T, D over T simply speak to us about what? Velocity. Because we know velocity is the rate of change of displacement. So if you look at it from that perspective, then we can also say that power is simply what? Is simply force times velocity. That is F times V. Also, we have defined power to say that power is simply the what? The rate at which energy is being transferred. So we can just simply say that power is also what? Change in energy over what? Over time. Okay, now let's look at what we mean by what? Efficiency. Let's move on and look at what efficiency is all about. Now, efficiency. What is an efficiency? Efficiency means how much useful work is done as a fraction of the energy used. Whenever you are doing any work, you put in an energy from the beginning of the work by the time you finish the work, you can find out that it is not all the energy you put into doing the work that is used in achieving the work that you have won, you have gotten at the end of the day. And that is the reason why you can see you can write an exams and at the end you're not getting 100%, you're getting maybe 80%, 50%, 70% or 20% or whatever you that you have gotten. Okay, that is just the efficiency. What you got as a result of the what? The energy you put into the system, which means it is your what? Your useful what? Energy. What that amount that is used in doing what? The useful work. Okay, so efficiency. Some of the work that is done by a machine is used to overcome friction. And that is the reason why we are not getting what? 100% of the what? Of the work done. Okay, so the efficiency of a motor is given as follows. And efficiency is always measured in what? In a percentage or it is measured as a percentage. So efficiency is simply actual power output divided by the theoretical power what? Output 
multiply by 100. What does this mean? Well, this simply implies efficiency is equals to energy output divided by energy input or work output divided by work input or power output divided by power input. So efficiency, as we have said earlier, is always expressed as what? As a percentage. So in effic efficiency exists whenever energy in the world around us is transferred from one form into what? Into another form. So if I have heat energy and heat energy is transferred into say sound energy or light energy, we can then look at the amount of work that is done in transferring the energy from heat states into what? A light state or into what? The sound state. And that percentage of energy that is being obtained is what we refer to as what? The efficiency. Okay. Let's try and look at some questions from this aspect and see. So question number one. A motor is used to raise a mass M through a vertical height H in time T. What is the power of the motor while doing this work? Option A, MGHT. Option B, MGH divided by T. Option C, MG T divided by H. Option D, HT divided by MG. Let's look at it and see. Which is the correct option? What are we doing? We are saying an object is being what? A motor is used to what? To raise a mass. Raising the mass simply means that we are lifting it up. And if it is going up, it means it's doing work against what? Gravity. So what is the work done? The work done is the what? Is the potential the work done by the potential energy, and that is going to be what mgh. So the W now has become what mgh. But remember that we said power is equal to what divided by t. Therefore, it should be mgh divided by t, which means the correct option to this particular problem is what option B. Question number two. A body of mass M moves at a constant velocity V through a displacement S against a constant frictional force F. What is the power required to keep the body moving at its constant velocity? Option A, Fx. Option B, FV, option C, MV squared, option C, OW. Now, look at the question again. Read to understand what we're trying to look out for. Remember you're given the mass. Remember you're given a velocity. You're given the force. And that is what we want to deal with. But remember we have said that if we are talking about power, power is just what? The work, the rate at which work is done, or it is the amount of energy that is transferred. So if you look at all these, we want to find the what the power that will be used to keep the body moving at a constant velocity. The very moment that we speak about the constant velocity there. What should come to our mind is to look at the formulas that are there and see which one best suits the word formulas for power, which we have spoken about earlier. And if you look at them, the only one which is the best option there is the word, is the option B, F, V. Why? Because work can simply be force time distance, and then the time is what? T. So it will be force times distance over t 
And remember that the D divided by T simply speaks to us about what? The rate at which one? The rate of displacement. Which is the what? Which is the velocity. Therefore, the correct option is option B. Okay, so let's look at a rate calculation question now. So we look at question number three. And question three, a 45 kg mass is selected at a constant speed of 2.2 meters per second for a distance of 8.5 meters. Question A, find the work done. B, find the required power to lift the mass over this distance. Option C, or question number C, if the motor is using 1.1 times 10 to the power 4 watts of electrical power, find its efficiency. Now let's go straight to the board and solve this problem. These are the informations that we are given. And remember, one good thing about this question which you need to take note of is that we are lifting an object up. And once we are lifting the object up, we are doing the work against gravity. So if you're doing the work against gravity, what we need to think of is that it is a potential what, gravitational energy that we are using. So our work done is now going to be that we are going to talk about a work done which is equal to EP equals to our W and that is going to be our MG changing H straight away to do the calculation. All right. Now, I can use uh, here change in H or change in D where this is representing what? Our displacement. Because I was at a certain point and now I'm lifting it to a certain point. So that is why I'm looking at what? Delta H. So I'm looking at a change. Right? Okay. So let's move on. If I have it from this point, what is the mass? The mass is given to me to the 45. Multiply by the gravity, and now it's going to be what? 9.8. And then I will multiply by what? The H, which is what? Which is the distance that we covered, and according to that, it is what? 8.5 meters. So let's see from there and see what we're going to get. It will be 45 multiplied by 9.8 multiplied by 8.5. And this should give me... 3,748.5 And remember, we are dealing with what? Work. So this must be in what? In joules. And you know all the time that we can also change this and put it into a standard form because we're dealing with what? We're dealing with signs. So we can say it is 3.7. Uh, I can say this is 2 sig fig, this is 2 sig fig, this is 2 sig fig. So I can call it 3.7 multiply by what 10 to the power of what I move three times so to the power of three joules this so this becomes my what that becomes the work that will be done in lifting the what the object up this is what is going to be the work done in lifting it up let's look at option B B says we should find the required power to lift the what the mass over what? Over a distance. So, if I want to find the power, what do I need to think of? What I think of is, straight away from this point, okay, uh, power is simply, I look at it from the point, it is the work done divided by what? The time. And remember, we are doing this work against what? Against gravity. So, I can talk about what? Force multiplied by what? Velocity because I'm giving the velocity, right? The rate at which the object was moving. The velocity, which, which the object was what? Moving. So I'm giving the velocity and we know we can find the force. What is the force? The force, the thing is being done against gravity. So therefore, we can say the F here is what? Mg. And if that is Mg, it is my power is now going to be what? M G multiplied by what? The V. And now let's go straight and see what is the mass? It is still 45. What is that? It is still 9.8, the strength of gravity. And now we multiply by the velocity, which is what? 22, or uh, 2.2. And now let's look at that and see. 45 
And well, I'm going to multiply that by 9.8 and multiply it by 2.2. And what I am getting is 970.2. This is power. Remember, power is measured in joules per seconds. Or joules per seconds is the same as watts. So we can call it watts. So let me use that, which is the common one that you use. That's the reason why each time you take your bulb and you see the sign, it is written. 20 watt, 50 watt, 100 watts, yeah, telling you the power that what that bulb can consume. All right, so here, that is the watts that we have there. So this becomes the power that we need there. So that is the power I need to do that. Okay, I have calculated for this. I know what was coming into your mind was that, okay, no, what about the time? Well, according to the question, the time was not given. And that is the reason why it is important for you to know all the formulas. So that when formula is not one, when one value is not given, you can substitute the alternative one that you know to solve the problem. Because time was not given doesn't mean we can't find the power. We can do that because there are formulas in which power is not what included in solving the word that. Alright? If we were given their time, then we could just simply take this and divide it by the time and that gives us what the power that we need now that we have been able to calculate for the power we can find the time from there as well if you want to find the time that we spent in what in doing this but or in, in doing this particular work in doing this particular work we can find the time from there that is it so let's look at option c option c What are we looking for in option C? Well, according to option C, we are told that if the motor is using 1.1 times 10 to the power 4 watts of electrical power, we should find it what? It's efficiency. What is efficiency? Well, efficiency, as we have said before, that efficiency is simply the what? The work input divided by, sorry, the work output divided by the work input or the power output divided by the power input. So, what do I know? I know something from the very beginning that we were given, we have been given right now a power, which is what? It is 1.1 times 10 to the power what? To the power 4. That becomes what? The input what? Power. Now, I have calculated what? The work output. I know the output power and the input power is given. So, it becomes very easy to solve that now. So, this is my power, what? Output, divided by the power input. Okay, pardon me to use blue for that part so we know the difference. Okay, and input for this. Okay, now I've been able to state the formula. Once the formula is stated, the values, we know them. The values that we know is that this output power, we have calculated that, and we got that is 970.2, and the input is given 1.1 multiplied by 10 to the power 4. They are all in watts, okay? Now, what do I need? Remember, I said this is always in percentage. So, I will multiply it by 100% so that my answer is going to be in percentage, okay? So, once we divide this by that and multiply it by 100, then we are getting what? 8.8 .8 watt percent. And this is the word is the efficiency of the world of the machine so this is how efficient the machine is how efficient the machine is i know somebody will ask the question out there and the question is can a machine work 100 percent efficient well in the real world that is not possible in the real world no machine can work what 100 percent no machine is 100% efficient, but it is possible 
where we are not looking at what the real world but as long as we move into the real world it is not possible because every machine will definitely work and the sum of the amount of the energy that is put into the machine will be used in overcoming friction and at the end of the day you are not going to get 100% watt efficiency so definitely every machine is less than 100% watt efficient thank you thank you very much for watching this video and uh, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel Mr. Do Science World and as you subscribe, please remember, like it, share it, and give your comments. See you next time. Bye-bye.